Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor and his friend Jake gives you sports betting tips. I am your host, Professor Sides, for the latest updates and information. You can find me on Twitter at Professor Sides. Assuming Twitter still exists, apparently. <laughs> if, who, who knows what's happening there? Um, and you can find my friend Jake on Twitter. Again, assuming it still exists at my friend underscore Jake. We do not have other platforms. Uh, but hey, if, if Twitter blows up, you can find us right here. You know where to find us because you are here. Um, this college basketball episode, we're going off the rails right off the right off the bat. <laughs> covers uh, select game schedules to be played on Friday, November 18th, 2022. If you should here, check out the webpage on the banner for a primer and explanation. It's www.pickstheprofessor.com slash new. Otherwise, the goals for this episode are to share key information about these games give you some things to think on and explain why certain plays are being made we never recommend blindly tailing or fading any pick but rather to hear the justifications the thought processes to make sure you're fully on board with us or against us before investing your hard money remember that sideline has graded plays on every single game but as always take what you like and leave the rest if you have questions about any of the games we're talking about or the ones we aren't the best place to get those answers is on our discord where we are all available me Jake and Cousin Jared. You can get that through the Patreon. Link is in the show description. As always, remember, there are no locks in gambling. So what Sideline provides are loves, likes, and leans. It is A, B, and C grades. Indicate its confidence level with respect to scaling wagers. However, please understand that good and bad variants will occur. So as much as we'd like to say it will be profitable each and every day, that is an impossible reality for any gambler. And Jake, we, we took the, the 11.30 Eastern AM, 11.30 AM Eastern game Talk on this year's show. Yeah, yesterday. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, it was like a 4 o'clock game. Here tomorrow, we're not talking about the four o'clock game. Uh, it's already happened by the time most of you get to watch this. Uh, no, where I was going, you know, took the early game and Pitt State on this here show yesterday. And I feel like, uh, what I say in the intro, all of that came to fruition in that game alone, right? There are no locks in gambling, including no locks of if the team that you're backing gets up 20 points that you can just cruise to a victory and not sweat it out. Because I think we all kind of thought that was at that point, that was a lock. And it's just a reminder, especially in college basketball, there are no locks in college basketball. Holy We're talking crap. about good and bad variants. And we saw that in the one game where Penn State was not as good as they looked in the first half. That was some good variants for us. And uh, Furman, not as good as that second half. That was some good variants for them, bad variants for us, right? We just saw yeah. that whole intro just in that one game, and that's the way this sport goes. That's why I was talking about long-term records, right? Not focusing on three games, five games, ten games. Well, you get really long-term stuff because basketball is weird, and sometimes it's funny when you have one game, especially a standalone early game, that if you had the opportunity, your eyeballs were on that game, and you just see all of the variants, all of the cliches in one game just of wackiness that we all thought was nothing. It turned out to be a sweat no matter what you played. Side total didn't matter. It was an interesting finish. Yeah, I, th I think it finished under, um, even, and even with the amazing first half. So if you're an over better, whoo, that would have been terrible because the way that first half went, you're like – and then – if Furman's coming back in the game, you're like, ooh, I got this in the bag. And then it, I think it's still finished under. So it's, ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Ba barely a cover for Penn State. Barely on the total. I mean, it was just a wild, a wild game. Uh, but, hey, it's it's a lot of fun. And that's why we're here to, to, to have the fun watching the college basketball. Uh, got a bunch of good games for you here today. A, a couple of really fun games to watch for sure uh before we get to that some reminders please hit that like button if you're on youtube also if you aren't yet please consider subscribing or following it's free and if you turn on notifications you won't miss any of the college basketball and there'll be our college football content that this channel provides already got those three college football episodes covering every single game of your college football uh, for your college football weekend. I've already mentioned that Patreon, but check it out if you haven't yet. Lots of great benefits found there above and beyond what we do here. Membership starts at just $3 per month. Gets you the plays of the day. Uh, two days ago, the plays of the day went two and two, and both losses were money line plays that lost by one point. Uh, here on Thursday, the four plays of the day went 4-0. Oh. So uh, check that out. Your 3 bucks a month will be well worth it. www.patreon.com slash picks with the professor but even if you're not with us over there we are still thrilled to have you with us right here uh, let's get to it all in courtesy of bet online sign up link in the show description the current as of the time of this recording on late thursday night and uh, we got the a plus play of the day a lot of good a plays over in the sheet as i was mentioned uh those are not always gonna win they aren't always gonna be profitable every single day there's ups and downs all over the place right now the b plays are doing better but you know Give it a day, three days, who knows how long. The A plays will do better and the B plays will do worse. That's just the way it goes, right? So A plays in general doing better. Uh, a lot of good ones over here. A lot of games on Friday. But your favorite, the A plus play of the day, 
is 6 p.m. Central Moorhead State at Vanderbilt. Uh, Vanderbilt, according to sideline, should only be an 8.9 point favorite. We've kind of faded uh, Vanderbilt a little bit this season. They've they've had stretches where they've looked okay. They've had stretches where they've really struggled. Definitely an up and down team. Uh, really, my opinion on on this team and. and you're my college basketball expert. I don't know if you agree with this or not. My opinion of this team is one that might look very different come March than today. Yeah. And we, we might look back and think about the things we said about this team and say, that's just not who is finishing the season. But right now, definitely a lot of variants around that team playing a pretty solid Moorhead State team. Uh, they are at home, of course, but again, so I said it should only be about a nine point spread. Currently, uh, the number is 12 and a half. So we're getting 12 and a half points with Moorhead State. Uh, Jake, that's your A plus play of the day. Tell us why. Yeah, like like you just said, Vandy will be a much better team come, come conference to play, and especially the second half because Stackhouse is a good coach and he's got some talent on the roster. It's just trying to get it all together and get it all designed, and I just don't think they're there yet. Um, that Temple game really surprised me, caught me off guard with how, how they played. They got some points off the bench, which hasn't really been happening for them. Uh, they got 20 from – uh, Robbins and then Stute led them with 21 right nearly had a triple double but I think that was a fluke and just kind of one of those games that Temple kind of pushed them into versus them actually playing for that game because uh, if you look at their tempo ratings I mean they're what 291 somewhere in there very very slow team uh, and that's that's where they want it they don't force a lot of turnovers they don't play that upper that kind of pressure defense and Moorhead is got two pretty big losses on their schedule. Um, Like 18 in Morgantown is uh, (laughs) nothing to be ashamed of, especially the way that that team can play. And and there's nothing left in Morgantown. So that place is always rocking. Uh, (laughs) That's what the, that's what the jokes about burning couches and stuff like that. Right. (laughs) And Indiana beat, beat them. And what those two teams, what they have in common is they are pressure defense, forced turnovers, forced pace, and it's uh, and it's relentless, like it. So, I, when both those games, Moorhead ended up with twenty plus turnovers. Vandy's not going to be there. They're they're not going to force those kind of turnovers. I think Sideline's got it nailed right. Under ten is where I expect this game to be. I think Vandy wins somewhere in that seven to nine range, right right in there. Depending on how it goes, I just like I said, I, Vandy doesn't play the style of game that's going to try to blow this team out. They play slow. That. That means less possessions. That means you have to be perfect, almost near perfect to get to blowout territory. And Vandy's not got, not that guy, not that team. Yeah. And I think, I mean, we'd all agree that Vanderbilt is nowhere near the team Indiana is. And I think for the most part, we probably would say that they're still not even in the same class as West Virginia. Um, and like I said, West Virginia, just a, a you know, a pretty good defense. Again, right now we're talking about, it does have a lot of the prior information in there. So, I hard to see exactly how much of this team it'll be, but our, our best guess as to West Virginia, according to Ken Palm, is uh, 36th best defense in the country. Um, that can cause some problems. Vanderbilt, uh, 92nd. Talk about the tempo that West Virginia plays. Maybe not extremely fast, but at least more middle of the pack, whereas Vanderbilt yeah. has not been playing that one to slow it down. So like I said, very different styles here. Makes it harder to win by a big number, especially when you have a decent team like Moritz State. Moritz State, not a great team, but, but no. a decent team, a respectable one, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, in West Virginia's tempo is kind of, misleading with how they play when they when they have the ball on offense they're slower when when they're not turning and turning you over and running and getting a layup so they're Mm -hmm. either fast break or take the take their time on offense so it's Mm -hmm. their tempo is hard to get rage get a rage or gauge on because i mean the 21 or 20 turnovers that warhead had in that game led to that it's gonna lead you a lot a lot quick buckets yep absolutely all right so our a plus play of the day here morehead state plus 12 and a half to the best B side, uh, speaking of that West Virginia team, <laughs> 6 p.m. So perfect. I didn't even play that. Uh, 6 p.m. Central, Penn at West Virginia. West Virginia, according to the model, should be favored by 14 and a half. Lock this in as a B grade pick earlier. Again, uh, 10 bucks a month for the uh, early access to the picks. Put those out the night before. Um, locked it in at 13 and a half. It's currently 15, but I think, Jake, you and I kind of agree. 15 is still probably a decent play. Uh, this West Virginia team, just much better than Penn at home. Probably going to give them a lot lot of trouble uh when you're in some of these you have to look there's some of these smaller schools you know Penn would classify as that some of them have the athletes to kind of hang in there and just not be out athlete leaded athleted 
Mm. Athleticized, whatever. <laughs> I do math, not English. Uh, but, but but some of them just get overwhelmed by that style of play. We just talked about that style of play, that defense that West Virginia can have could potentially really overwhelm Pitt, lead to a lot of those quick buckets. And that's what we talked about in the previous segment. Makes it If you don't do that, makes it harder to cover a big number. If you are doing that, it makes it easier to cover big numbers. That's why we're laying a bigger number with West Virginia. Again, I like them 13 and a half. Jake, we're playing it still at 15 for the best B side. Tell us a little more about this one. Yeah, like we just talked about, West Virginia is deadly at home. Uh, that place gets rocking, and they can they can easily turn into quicksand when it comes to turnovers when they get that press going. Uh, the only kind of worry here is they might be looking ahead a little bit to Purdue. Uh, that should be a pretty big game, but it's not a rivalry game or anything like that. So I don't know how much – that's not too big of a fear, but that's the only thing you're going to really look at because Penn does not have the talent here. They're one and three, and they beat Drexel. Um, they, they've got – Two guys to worry about, Dingle and Clark S., because I can't say his last name. Um, after that, there's not much offensive help or defensive help. It's just those two guys and the rest of the team is mm. – um, and they're turning the ball over at a pretty high rate. They're at 21.5%, and that's playing against much, much worse defenses uh, than <laughs> what West Virginia will have, where they're forcing about a turnover in 27% of their opponent's possessions. Uh, at home, so that's going to be a bad combo. That's why I think this game ends up closer to twenty twenty five than it does fifteen ten there. Just because I, I think at some point they're just going to there will be a stretch there where Penn will go like a minute and a half without crossing half court, and it's just going to be uh, terrible. Because I mean the Texas transfer Trey Mitchell, which this was a great trade between West Virginia sending Bridges to Baylor and getting the or not all that, but so they got Mitchell, who's playing very well, seems a lot more comfortable in this style of offense or in defense than he did at Texas. Um, Huggins is just a really, really good coach, and he brought in uh, Toussaint from Iowa, Joe Toussaint, who was a really good spark plug for that Iowa team at times. If you remember, he would just come in and like make a couple big plays, whether it's pass, defense, like hit a couple big threes. Um, or something that was just a different style of playing than what most of the Iowa team was. So going in, going over here to West Virginia, he is really, really playing well. Um, and I think that's a big playing big dividends. It just West Virginia has too much for this Penn team uh, to not cover the this number. And, and I think it's an interesting point. It kind of to elaborate on some of what you said. Penn's calling card to we're going to be a, a middle of the pack team this year, and, and it's early. Who knows if they will be? But but if they are going to be a middle of the pack, ranked in the one hundred and fifty to two hundred range type team, it's going to be because their offense, right? If their offense falls apart, they're going to fall down. I think we're pretty confident their defense isn't going to be very good, yeah. so they're going to fall down into the two hundreds and become uh, a much easier opponent. But if they're going to stay at this level of competent basketball it's going to be because they're offense but that offense is going to be a is it going to be about uh, can they shoot the ball or is it going to be the guard play and the turnovers and that's going to be the big question mark so if you if you're listening to this and you say i think that Penn isn't going to turn the ball over then you disagree with that play and that's fine again we want you to to invest your money however you see fit if you disagree with us then then don't follow us here I think the idea that, that we're going to get here is that we think that Penn has a, has a decent offense and can shoot the ball potentially, can work some layups and as well, but they're going to struggle with turnovers and their offense isn't going to score on the possessions that they turn the ball over <laughs> by definition. Yeah. And that's going to be the problem. And, and all it's going to take here is an extra handful of turnovers like that. And, and it's going to be a swing of kind of, like you said, just a stretch, you know, what a TV timeout to TV timeout stretch that goes, you know, 14 to two West Virginia because of three or four turnovers. And all of a sudden it's going to look a whole lot easier to cover this big number. Yeah. All righty, to the shake and bake with Jake. We're going to try us a little parlay here, a game where you like a side and the total. 6 p.m. Central, Delaware at Duke. According to the model, this should be Duke minus 23. Uh, current number is 22 and a half. The total on this one's 143. I think we all agree Duke's probably going to win this game. The only question is by how much. Uh, I think you and I both in the model think that it's going to be a runaway. We've, we've talked about this a little bit. We've talked about it on the Discord some. 
Uh, it's been interesting this year. There have been more just wildly blowout type games than we've seen before. It, teams either are like, you know, Pine Bluff has done it a couple times. Uh, some of the SWAC schools have done it. Teams are either 25 point underdogs and they're hanging in there and they're losing by seven or they're winning outright or that sort of stuff. Or they're like losing by like 40. It's just, it's been a high variance type thing for some of these weaker schools. Delaware definitely counts as a weaker school. Probably going to have a tougher time with Duke on the road. Uh, what is your parlay on this one? We're, no, we're laying the points with Duke. Are you going over the 143 or under the 143? Well, I'm going under. Duke's okay. uh, defense here is very, very good. I mean, Kansas was the first team to break 50 on them um, and they got to 69. They haven't had I mean, that was the highest scoring game Duke's played in at 69 64, I think is what it finished at. And that's 133, which is still 10 points shy of this. Uh, Delaware's not going to score much here. I mean, Jameer Nelson, they've got Jameer Nelson Jr., and he'll be fun to watch. But after that, it kind of falls off. Um, I feel really old now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just hear that. Yeah. That, that, I had the same thought when I was like, oh, oh, no. And this is, he's a, he's a junior too. So it's not like he's Even not worse. been there for yeah. 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 So, uh, it's going to be it's going to be rough. Um, there also, there's a huge size advantage. I mean, most games Duke plays in, there's going to be a big size advantage because yeah. they're just a very tall team. But the highest, the t- highest, really, uh, the tallest guy on <laughs> on uh, Delaware is like six nine, and Duke's mm. got four seven footers, and mm. most of their team is between six seven and six ten. Like except for the couple point guards, it, it is going to be really tough for those that six nine guy to follow around. Uh, Flavowski or Lively or even Young. Um, and the way the number is moved, because like once again, pitch the Patreon, you would have got this around 20 and a half if you got the early picks with the $10 a month. Said, so, But the way the numbers jumping right now, and I expect it to jump more, uh, it's looking like Whitehead's going to play because um, he got back to practicing before the Kansas game, but doesn't play the Kansas game. So it seems like he'll play this one. Uh, and pro- probably not a full game, but at least yeah. getting out there. 10, 15 minutes is every little bit's going to help on something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, if, if you've got uh lively to kind of judge off of that's, that's what he did. His first game in, he played about 15 minutes and he's slowly getting more and more game shape um, with might have been out longer. It might've been, might be a little shorter, but even just adding him in there and having that threat, that's going to just make this Duke team even better. I mean, their, their defense is unreal. I've been very impressed with how Shire's doing that. I mean, in that Kansas game, if you watched it, I'm sure you did. If you're a college basketball junkie at all, uh, it, there were stretches where Duke's offense just kind of disappeared and they couldn't figure it out. But they hung in the game slowly with their defense and be able to play very, very good defense. And really, it makes it really tough to score around the rim when you can have two seven footers out there. Uh, yeah. and that's what's going to happen a lot. And I don't see Delaware helping the score out a lot. They're, they're ranked one spot above Jacksonville, who Duke beat by 40 and allowed like 40 points in. So they're like, they're looking at 120 something for that total. Uh, so I, I think the total is really, really off here. Yeah. Sideline says 141, I believe. So 143, a little bit too high. And and I tend to agree when, you, when you look at the tempo ratings for both these teams as well, both these teams are, are right in the bottom third ish. I mean, neither one of them seems to want to push the pace and you have to wonder if Delaware is going to even try to go even slower because I, there are, there are some coaches out there in all sports who are just a little bit not very bright, unfortunately. But most coaches are pretty smart and kind of realize in a, in a situation where you're outmatched, if you have more possessions, you have more time for the other team to show their dominance. And if you have fewer possessions, you have a more of an opportunity to spring an upset. So if Delaware has any hopes of an upset, they, they want to play a – a 60 possession game, not an 80 possession game, right? Like they do not want to make this go faster than possible. So that's also going to help your under uh, yeah. case right there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think Duke is going to be a slower paced team than what we've seen in the past this year, just based on the few games we've seen so far. Um, that might change a little bit when Whitehead gets in there again, one more, uh, another ball handling athlete out there, but I don't see it changing too much. I They've put in the 80s. And once no need year. to in, no need to in this game specifically yeah. either. There's no need to run up and down. Just kind of go out there and play and have your normal style. Don't. There's no point in anybody doing anything crazy at this point. You're just kind of getting good possessions and good work in at this point. It's yeah. kind of like an exhibition game almost. And it's not exactly. I mean, I'm not not no disrespect to Delaware, but I mean, they got enough talent. They should be able to just walk off the court and win this one. Yeah, I totally agree. 
Yeah. Uh, so it, we've got Duke minus 22 and a half in the under 143 for our shake and bake parlay of the night to the must see TV slot. There's a couple of really good games here. We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to highlight it, but uh, UCLA in Illinois, obviously a, a, a game that you're going to want to keep some eyeballs on current number one. That's UCLA two and a half. It's a borderline A grade pick for yeah. the model. Uh, and Jake, you said you, you you'd probably lay the two and a half as well at that short of a number with UCLA. Yeah, yeah. That like I mean, being it's played in Vegas, being that much closer to uh, UCLA than Illinois, that helps out the travel and the uh, going backwards in time. Um, but it's this game. That game should be absolutely incredible to watch. It's two fast paced teams that are loaded with offensive talent, not necessarily incredible defenses and neither one of them has played a real team yet both of them have just been playing two enough games so it's the first time to see them what, what they're really going to do and mm-hmm. uh, i clark is an incredible freshman but he's not playing so well right now uh but epps was the freshman that really not many people were talking about and he is playing outstanding um and terry Channon jr looks a lot more comfortable in this offense and defensive style than he did at texas tech so it should be just a blast to watch Mm-hmm. But we're actually going to highlight for the must see TV spot the game before that. Baylor and Virginia will be a 6 p.m. Central uh, tip off. Sideline says this should be Baylor minus six. Uh, the current number for this one still sitting at the four and a half uh, that I got it at, according to uh, an earlier uh, uh, play. So, still holding on at four and a half. Jake, why is Baylor minus four and a half the play for this game? Well, Baylor's yet to play a game where they've had to try outside the first quarter of it. So I just I find it very tough for them for Virginia to really have the offense to keep up here. Um, Virginia's a good team, very very good team. I expect just big things out of them, but I mean they just don't have the offensive offensive talent or the athleticism to really keep up with uh, Baylor. Baylor is just loaded, absolutely loaded. Scott, I don't know how Scott Drew does it. He it's just over and over. I mean, he brought back Flagler, Cryer, and Thamba, who are just very, very good players. Um, has Keontae George come in, who's just an incredible player. I mean, it's going to be one and done. He'll be a name you'll know in the NBA. And then you got a really good transfer in Bridges. It's just absolutely loaded, talented team. Virginia is a very slow team, very – like everything traditional Virginia, Tony Bennett, Virginia team is. I mean, he still has Kihei Clark somehow, who I guess is getting a second doctorate. I I don't know. Yeah, it seems like he's been there forever. (laughs) uh, It's just nuts that he's still playing basketball. I mean, he did. He got one of the sneaky, really good transfers, in my opinion, and Vanderplas from Ohio. Uh, I just – I don't think there's enough offense for him here, and I don't think their defense is good enough to really stop Baylor as much. I mean – I don't think it's a blowout by any stretch, but I, th- I think this is more of like an eight to 10 point game that it is the four and a half. I think a lot of the question around this game, you know, again, if you want to give you something to think on here is how you feel about that NC central Virginia game. NC central uh, traditionally not a team you would think of as very, you know, very good at basketball, but they've looked decent so far after that first game against Virginia, they lost by five at app state uh, a little bit more disappointing losing by 16 at Liberty, but I mean, playing a tough schedule and kind of hanging in, they're not getting run completely. But I think if you, if you think that NC central is a, a decent team, maybe you think a little bit more of Virginia, but if you don't, yes, Virginia had the dominant win against Monmouth, but allowing 61 to NC central playing in a game where they scored seven, and it gets Monmouth they're playing eight, 89. It, it, yeah. it doesn't feel like the typical Virginia team and the typical strengths. Like th- they've got some talent obviously, and he's going to try to still do what he wants to do, but it just doesn't feel like the, the way that, you're going to get to that top seed. Like it feels like if, if if I'm watching Virginia play and I think they're number one seed Virginia, they're beating teams like, you know, 65 to 30 and that sort of game. And it's like, they haven't done that yet. Now, obviously they're good, but yeah, you just, there are some questions I have at least a little bit of, is that defense as good as the defense has been before? Like, are they relying a little bit on that offense? And that's, is that really like, I just, I don't quite know. Whereas you look at Baylor, like you said, it's like, it looks like just the same old, same old dominant Baylor yeah. uh, team at this year. So I, I, I don't have any questions about Baylor. I have questions about Virginia. So it, it, to me, it seems like a pretty easy 
lay a short number because maybe Virginia is a top 10 team and can hang in there uh, with Baylor, but maybe they aren't. Whereas I would never question the other way around. I think we all feel pretty confident that this Baylor team is going to be really good this year. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, I wasn't, not that I questioned them coming into the year, but I was like, okay, maybe, maybe with the loss of mayor uh, leaving and going mm-hmm. to Illinois and a couple other players, like players gone and, like you didn't know exactly what you're gonna get out of Flag. Uh, who, who was hurt last year? I think last year was it Flagler or was it uh, Cryer that didn't play a lot because he was hurt. Uh, and multiple guys that were yeah. hurt. Flagler was dealing with some minor injuries at one point. Yeah, they just that team had so many guys that ended up being nicked and in and out, and it just kind of never. It, it just as opposed to the year before, it just kind of never really all seemed to sink in. Where it's like all the pieces where they just couldn't quite get it all together at the end of the at the end of the year. It looked like. Yeah, yeah, and so I was like, all right, I want to see what they do, and then they come out and they just beat the brakes off Mississippi Valley State, and it really just haven't stopped from there. So it's just they're a very, very good team. Yeah, absolutely. All right, to the overtime segment here. One last game we want to get in on the record. 7 p.m. Central, Boston College at George Mason. This is one, again, that the model locked in is an A-grade pick several hours ago at George Mason, minus two. It's currently out to three and a half. Uh, but, Jake, you still think it's a totally fine and acceptable play at three and a half. Tell us why. Yeah, Boston College just looks so bad. They barely beat Cornell and Detroit Mercy then lost to Maine. Um, the traditional powerhouse that Maine is. Uh, it, yes, in, in, in hockey, I, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's, so, I guess this is not a hockey show, though. Well, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, George Mason's one loss is their opening loss at Auburn. Uh, by, where I, it was, I mean, that at Auburn is tough. Uh, but the next two games, they won by 14 and 17. Um, we talked on that first show where we tried to play the over in that Auburn-George Mason game where – King Kim English has brought in the transfers to really up the talent level there. Victor Bailey is killing it there in his first year there. He's uh, he's playing like he was supposed to at Tennessee. He's hitting 50% for the threes, leading the team in scoring. Uh, they play a really good defense and a very slow style. Uh, so I just – I don't see Boston College having the talent to speed the game up, speed them up, get them off their game or anything to make it where – George Mason isn't doing exactly what they want to do. And I, I, it's going to be a rough year to be boss college fan. Cause I just, I don't see anything good happening for them. And, you know, and, and yeah, George Mason and Maine similar in the regard. I mean, obviously George Mason, a much better team, but similar in the regard of playing slow, not looking to, to run at all. So it's a similar style there. Uh, yeah. Boston college, definitely a team that, you know, it's early and you, you never really know again, how a team's going to look in another month and maybe turn it around Today, you just never write, you know, right? There's no locks in gambling. So uh, they, they may they may make us look kind of foolish, but it definitely some questions are one of those that, like you said, like it, it could be just down, down, down for them at this point. There's still some rating systems that have them around 100 or so, and it's like there's – you look at it and you go – you see other teams around them and you say, yeah, I think that they'll be pretty decent. You know, and you look at a team like Boston College, you're like, man, the floor is really low for them. I don't know if they're going to hit. I don't know where, but – the floor is low yeah. for that team with what we've seen so far. That loss to Maine, I mean, we had an A-grade pick on Maine grabbing all those points, but I never thought that Maine would actually win that game and, and win basically like wire to wire and just dominate yeah. that game. Like that was I, – again, I thought Maine might, might hang in there, but that was very surprising given how, how bad Maine has been. Yeah, I, I've – as a coach, I don't have a very high opinion of Grant. I, I just – I don't think he's – ever going to be the reason his team plays above their talent level. I think he'll quite often be the reason they play below their talent level. Um, and I think that's what we're going to see all year here is he's just not going to have the guys in the right places or the right set. Or, I mean, the coaches are not as important as in like football or something where they're calling plays, but getting, getting the guys ready and make an out of timeouts and calling timeouts and doing all that really has a big effect on the game sometimes. And I, I just don't see him doing it. Not that I can do any better, but also a great caveat. Like I said, we, we, sometimes we throw a little shade at some coaches or players. And again, we caveat, you know, th- not that we could do better. We're just talking about relative to their peers. You know, we, you know, we, we don't want their jobs. So, you know, official, official declaration. We do not want their jobs. They, <laughs> t- tougher and, and more, and more stress than we would handle. Right. Well, I mean, my dream job is to be a fired fo- NCAA football coach. Um, and just collect the money. Yeah. Just collect the money and go sit on a beach. 
Yeah, I was thinking, or, or like a you know backup NFL quarterback or bullpen catcher for a yes. ba- major league baseball team, right? As long as you can hold up on the knees, right? Bullpen catcher, you get the World Series ring if you win and everything, and you never have to do anything, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we've got for you today, Jake. Any parting words uh, for everyone's Friday? No, this is feast week or start it's the start of feast week where we get a bunch of good games. We got Kentucky Gonzaga coming up this weekend. We got the two of this. Uh, coming out tonight it's going to be a fun fun week ahead yep all righty well thanks for tuning into this episode of picks the professor don't forget to subscribe so you can enjoy all the sports betting content we've brought this channel dropped right into your feed i'll see you again tomorrow with more college basketball betting content and until then as always best of luck and remember you can eat your betting money but please don't bet your eating money <laughs>